birds. You call them the house flies, I call them sky raisins. My cats are really good at catching uh, mosquitoes. Really handy to have around. So this is a different way of looking at things. And uh, tell you a bit of a story. A few years ago, we got a call from a guy named uh, a Mark. Uh, I'll just call him Mark uh, because he's a customer. Uh, it says, are there any Marks here? No Marks. Okay. And I'll just give him a picture. So I just image searched Mark, and the first thing that came up uh, was uh, this picture. So I'll use this guy for my presentation. And Mark, he's not very happy. He's in the DRC, he's trying to mill some uh, copper ore, and uh, his mill, his ball mill, keeps tripping. Okay, he's got profibus issues. Uh, there, he's got interference, and it's causing all sorts of havoc. And by the way, this is what his mill looks like. Pretty massive uh, bit of uh, kit. His bosses are shouting at him, which are mostly mechanical guys, Mark's an instrument guy. And uh, they're telling him, your profibus trips are damaging our mill and costing us production. So he looks pretty sad. <laughs> so Mark asked me to hop onto a plane. This was the worst flight I've ever had, by the way. The cabin lost pressure on the way back and the fire alarm went off and it was pretty stressful. Uh, but I'm here. <laughs> so <laughs> hop onto a plane. Uh, to the DRC, check into some nice accommodation, and uh, we get to work. So, first things first, we find some more insulation issues. No, what happened? Okay, there it is. We find some insulation issues. Broken shields between uh, devices. If you don't know why that's a problem, come on our training. Missing active terminators. Also, come on our training. Cable clearance violations. More cable clearance violations. This is my favorite one. Also, broken shield. Then we got to the process uh, automation network, the PA network. And uh, we were looking for a short circuit, so we're trying to track it down, opening up different devices, and then we got down to who was causing this issue, the culprit. And uh, you know, they're not as sealed as they, they might say they are, or it hasn't been closed properly. So a bit of corrosion caused uh, damage to the sensors, and this is what's been causing all these trips. You know, they, they're not getting the, the feedback they should be getting. We weren't done yet, so some more tracking down to do. And uh, yeah, we found some more connectors that had uh, taken a beating, beating by the uh, elements. Also some wildlife. <laughs> we fixed all their problems. And uh, everything was running fine. And to give Mark some level of confidence, um, we put in a Combrex. Combrex is just sitting, monitoring the Profibus health, the network, uh, health and it alerts you. It's connected through an Ethernet interface. It alerts you if something goes wrong, or you can log in at any stage over the weekend, maybe, and see if anything has gone wrong and do some uh, analysis or preemptive maintenance. Find out what what's causing these disturbances and address them before they become issues. The great thing about this is uh, it's permanently monitoring, and we can remotely access. Uh, the health by network. So Mark's network is sitting in the DRC, stuck a Combrex on there, on the Combrex. I've got a uh, NetBiter, and uh, as you've learned, the NetBiter allows for remote tunneling, and as you've learned from Jackson, it's a secure remote tunneling. And uh, from Joburg, or wherever I am in the world, I can log in and have a look at uh, his uh, signal statistics, his signal health, strength, and all of that remotely. So that was great. Mark's pretty happy. But now his mind switches. Because he's happy with the production. Uh, everything, his uptime is there. Uh, but now he wants to uh, um, maybe start tweaking things. He wants to know if you can use the NetBiter to monitor process values. Because you can see, he wants to think, like, how do I get more through my uh, process now. And I go, I'll show you, you can do that. You just stick a Anybus X gateway on there. The gateway converts uh, the Profibus protocol to the protocols that the uh, NetBiter speaks. And uh, from anywhere in the world, uh, he can access that information through customized dashboards. Uh, you can get alerts, alarms, and he can also change his values. So he loves this, of course. 
All right, and uh, yeah, you can focus on this process, but uh, of course we get the question, is there an app? You know, he's sitting in the DRC, signals a bit dicey, uh, and that's been kind, and uh, even here, the signal can be pretty bad. So these wonderful graphical dashboards and graphs and that can take ages to download on a, on a phone or on a, on a web page if you just have edge. So he wants something that is lightweight and is able to just get the value so that he can make decisions uh, on, on his process and it doesn't matter where he is. Uh, he spends six uh, weeks in the DRC and then he comes back for two weeks to South Africa and that's his routine. While he's in South Africa, he has to help the guys that, are, that he's left behind. And uh, sometimes they cancel his leave. So actually, uh, this netbox has been helping him not cancel his leave. But yeah, there was no app. Okay, so this is us, Moss. And, uh, but we can write one using the API. The netbox has an API. Uh, what is that? Application programming interface, which allows you as a developer. Is anyone a developer here? No, no one. Ah, oh, there's one. Jackson, thanks. <laughs> to build, that will not use the existing dashboards that are there, uh, but with this API, build your own interface into your own storage system, build your own dashboards, or wherever you want to get the information to. <laughs> so, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> so we do a bit of coding, despite all the fires that are going on around us, uh, we put an app onto the store, and uh, there's uh, an app uh, for Apple and uh, for Android. And actually, does anyone have a Windows phone? It's also available on Windows if you like. <clears throat> and he can remotely, or from the palm of his hand, look at his systems, see what's online, what's, what's healthy, what's not healthy, check some live values, uh, manage his alarms, and even write values. So he can actually send a control command Sitting in his farm in Meisner, that's his sort of farm, gets paid a lot. Mm -hmm. But, uh, and uh, start the mill. Can you, can you imagine something like that from your phone? But this is what his mill looks like, and this is what his view looks like. And uh, this is a real case. Uh, so he is in the DRC, and it's for a company called uh, um, Eurasian Resources, or it's a Russian owned company. Uh, ENCR is what they used to be called, so Frontier Mine, if you know, if you know them. And uh, his values are coming through, and he's able to, uh, at any moment, see what's happening. So he's, uh, he's pretty popular as well. Uh, actually, this was a very cheap solution for him, because the existing licenses he had to pay to do just that was uh, quite horrendous. So those uh, mechanical guys are actually by his fans now. Uh, you can find him on LinkedIn. <laughs>